This is the third video from fourth grade measurement. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about perimeter and area. And so the teaks for perimeter and area are 4.5C, which is not tested, but it is the teak where we have to show students models. And from those models of area and perimeter, they determine the formulas that they need to use to find perimeter and area of rectangles and squares. Then from there, we move into 4.5D, which is where we actually solve problems related to perimeter and area, okay? So um, basically, um, perimeter is first introduced in third grade. And in third grade, students find perimeter of regular and irregular two-dimensional shapes. They also find um, the missing side. So when given a perimeter, they may find the missing side of um, the shape based on the total perimeter and the value of the other sides. Um, in third grade for area, they relate per area to multiplication arrays. Um, they still give them, so for instance, if I had a shape or I had a rectangle like this, it may look like this on a test. Where they want to know the area of this rectangle and students will have to say, well, this is one, two, three, four. And this is one, two, three, four, five. So I can find it out by four times five equals 20. Now students could go ahead and finish out the rectangle, but the whole point of this teak is that they relate that this is an array, that area is just like an array, okay? So that's what they do in third grade. So let's talk about the very first teak we have, which is to um, use models to find um, the, per, the formula for area and perimeter. So I may give students this shape with tiles and ask them to make it with me. And from this shape, I'm gonna to talk to students about what is the perimeter and what is the area. So, and we're gonna leave it here. So we're gonna to talk to students about what's the perimeter and what's the area. So the perimeter, if I work out the perimeter, I think my markers are going out on me. If I work out the perimeter, I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right? I get a perimeter of twelve inches. And then, and I know that because I do the one, the two, the three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then when I fit calculate area, I'm counting the inside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It has a area of eight square inches or eight inches squared. Okay. And I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video, but one of the things that I'll do for students to help them remember area and perimeter is we do kind of like a window pane. And we write perimeter on the outside of the pane, which reminds them that we're looking for the outside or the rim when we talk about the perimeter. And on the inside, we write the word area. So it helps students remember that to find the area, we're looking for the space inside of the shape. All right, so then I may have students create another rectangle. using color tiles. And we're gonna talk about this perimeter and area. So 
So perimeter here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen inches. And my area is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight square inches. And each time I'm going to create these, I'm going to ask the students to tell me what it is that they did to find the perimeter and find the area. And I'm going to ask them what do they see is similar and different with these rectangles. And we're just going to keep playing today on this day with building, with finding the area and finding the perimeter. And then you can say, well, what is it when I find the area of rectangles? What do, am I doing every single time? Or finding the amount inside. Well, wonderful. How have we done that every single time? We've either counted them, but what is a faster way to do it than counting? And so then, hopefully you're going to have a student say, well, we did the length times the width, right? Um, how many are in the row? times how many were, I mean, how, how many rows times how many columns, right? So basically it's the length and the width of the shape. And so we're going to write area equals length times width. Then when we talk about perimeter, how have we found perimeter every single time? Well, we've added one side plus another side plus another side plus another side. Okay, so we can say we've added side plus side plus side plus side, or what's another way I can do that? Or we can say we've done two times the length plus two times the width to find the perimeter. So the first day that you're doing area and perimeter, you're really just giving them opportunities to play with area and perimeter and determine what these two formulas are. Because once they have an idea of what the formulas are and they've created that idea, they're gonna learn much more by having created and, and found this with you instead of you just standing up and saying, okay, boys and girls, the area of a rectangle is length times width. Okay, the area of a uh, square is four squared because then you can say also this is four times the sides if it's a square. And Instead of you telling, let's let them explore those formulas for area and perimeter because that is what your TEAC says. Students are figuring out the formulas, they're determining the formulas for perimeter of a rectangle um, and area of a rectangle. Okay? All right. So, um, once we do that, and they figured out the formulas. Um, one activity I like doing is um, before we get into problem solving with area and perimeter is to do the area perimeter sort with them. I think it's so very important for students to understand what situations where I'm looking for the perimeter and what situations I'm looking for the area because sometimes in problems they're not going to tell us. So I think doing a perimeter area sort is so important. Um, for instance, if I have this problem, Mark wants to build seats around the edges of the sandbox, what does he need to know? If I'm talking about the edges of a sandbox, what does that mean, boys and girls? I'm looking for the edge around the shape. So which one of these are around the shape? I need to know the perimeter. The Smiths are putting a new wood floor in their living room. What do they need to know? A floor. So they're covering the entire floor. Are they looking for the edges only? Am I just going to put tile around the edges or am I going to put tile on the entire floor? They would need to know the area. I think that's an excellent activity. You really could do it at the very beginning because kids should come to you knowing um, the difference between area and perimeter. So it might actually be a very good um, activity to do at the very beginning of your area perimeter lesson. All right, so i um, trying to think where I want to go from here. So we talked about students. Okay, so now we're going to solve problems with perimeter and area. Um, so I pulled some 2016 release test questions. 
Um, and so I wanted to just go over a few things. This one says, use the ruler provided to measure the length and width of each rectangle to the nearest centimeter and ask them what the difference between the perimeter is, perimeters are. Make sure students are having the opportunity to use a ruler in your classroom, whether it's a station, because they may be asked, just like in this problem, to use the ruler to measure the length and the width of these shapes and then find the perimeter of them. Okay. All right. In fourth grade with area and perimeter, sometimes we lose our pictures. And so I think it's very important that you teach students anytime they have an area or perimeter problem in fourth grade, because they're only rectangles and squares and we can draw those, is anytime we do not have a picture, they need to draw the picture for themselves. So this one says that Sebastian had a rectangular piece of paper. So we teach students, draw that rectangle. It was 90 millimeters long. They label it and 50 millimeters wide. He cut the paper in half, okay? So if I cut the paper in half, is this side of my rectangle still 50? Yes. What would be the measure of this? And so that's where if kids draw a picture, they can have a visual representation. Well, it's not all 90, what's half of 90, which is 45, okay? And so then you can talk them through um, how to do this problem, okay? All right, the next, here's another problem that was on that test once again. They do not give a picture, so you have students draw it. Had a width of three meters and a length of two meters. What is the perimeter? And so that way they don't forget to add that other side. Okay. All right. So if a problem does not have the um, actual picture model for area and perimeter, please have students draw it. All right, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I have missed about area and perimeter in fourth grade. They're gonna discover those formulas. They're going to be in application problems. Um, limit the use of worksheets that just give students a problem and says find the area and find the perimeter. Um, the hardest thing for students to determine is, am I looking for the area Am I looking for the perimeter? And what formula is that that I use? Okay. All right, so if you have any questions on area and perimeter in fourth grade, please let me know. Until the next time.